pictures. I'm Erin Burnett. This is CNN. Janet Mock has a remarkable life story. Janet was born a boy and at the age of 18 she took the extraordinary step to become the woman that she is today. But Janet went even further in 2011, revealing her secret to the world in a profile in Marie Claire magazine. Janet is now a fierce advocate for the transgender community and is telling her story in the new memoir, Redefining Realness, My Path to Womanhood, Identity, Love and so much more. And Janet Mock joins me now exclusively. How are you, Janet? Very good. So this is the, the amazing thing about you. Had I not known anything about your story, I would have had absolutely not a clue that you had ever been a boy, a male. Mm -hmm. Which makes me absolutely believe you should, you should always have been a woman. And that must have been what you felt when you were young. Take me back to when you first thought, this is not right. I'm not Charles, which was the name you were given when you were born in Hawaii. I'm a woman. I'm a girl. <laughs> I think for me it was just, I always knew that I was me. I didn't know that it was about gender or that it was about um, anything other than just the inclinations that I just kind of naturally had, the things that I was drawn to. My mother loves to say that I was a very vocal and adamant child. She remembers that when I was three years old, I um, landed in the emergency room for putting one of her earring backings into my ear and it went down. I don't really remember the memory, but I do remember the vanilla ice cream that I got to have afterward. Um, Did you ever feel like, say, I can't deal with this, I'm going to have to go back to being a boy, Charles? At what point did you change your name? I think for me, it was still, it was a series of little bitty steps, which I do detail in the book. Um, but for me, it, there was never any turning back. It was always moving forward. But for when me. you began wearing the girls' clothes at school, was that when you began calling yourself Janet? Or was it after you had the, the operation when you were 18? Um, it was way before that. I was named Janet because of my love for Janet Jackson, because of our shared cheekbones and smile. You do look a bit like Janet Jackson. I don't want to say anything, but now you've raised the spectre. <laughs> well, I was very I've interviewed much... Janet. You look very like her. <laughs> I was very much obsessed with the velvet rope in right. high school, and I was very emotional at that time. And that album just spoke to me. Mm. And it was um, something that I think it spoke to a lot of people who felt different. Janet was fierce on that cover. She was fierce in it. She talked about her sexual orientation mm. and her sexual fluidity and, you know, domestic violence and all these dark things within that album which empowered me growing so I'm up. seeing a bit of Janet and a bit of Beyonce especially with the hair oh I live for Beyonce no. and the dress because this is very like the dress Beyonce wore when I interviewed her not that I can remember every second of that day <laughs> well I live for Beyonce so that's a very great compliment <laughs> thank you so here you go this takes a lot of courage this you're going through school you've gone from Charles to Janet from boys clothes to girls school uh, clothes and you've coped with all the teasing and the bullying and you've come through and it's made you I guess strong in your head enough to say I'm going to go through properly with this and become a woman. I'm going to have a transgender operation, which is a huge thing to do at 18. Tell me how you felt when you, when you actually were approaching the operation. Well, that was a, that was a big step in a long journey, right? right? It, 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 my, it took 18 years to come to that journey. And it may seem very young to a lot of people, but for me, those matters were very urgent. And they were also a very long process. And so for me, it was, um, it was a step for me to move closer to me. It was a rec reconciliation with myself. It was kind of a stamp of personal approval of my own womanhood. What was the moment after you had it, when you looked in the mirror, and we're finally able to think, wow, that is who I'm supposed to be. It felt validating and affirming. But was there a moment, was it immediately afterwards or was it <laughs> a month, a year? I think it actually came before it. I think the road coming up to that was actually a bigger journey for me, a bigger As you sense approached of validation. Adult, a proper yes. Adulthood. yes, because at 18 I could finally make the decision to do it on my own without I mean, having to consult It takes anyone. such guts, Janet. That's the thing that strikes me about your book and having met you, is you're obviously just incredibly gutsy but very determined because there must have been so many people I guess I'm, I'm surmising here trying to persuade you this is not a good idea that you should stick mm -hmm. to nature's plan you'll have heard all the cliches yeah I'm sh I, I, yeah it's I guess I, I don't marvel at it that much because for me there was no other choice but to be myself you know, I was a young trans girl growing up in Honolulu, Hawaii, who had parents that were very ill-equipped but super loving. They were super accepting of me. And for me, it, I had no other choice. I needed to be myself. I knew that by choosing to live my life for me and cut out all the noise from other people, then, then it would enable me to live a life that was full and affirming and happy. You come to New York about eight years ago. 
Um, you got a scholarship to college, moved to New York. You wanted to earn a master's degree. When you first got to New York City, what was that for you after all you'd been through to get to this thriving hub of all types of people? I think New York was a part, the third part of my dream. I had three dreams, which was number one was to become a writer, to live my life as myself, and three was to move to New York City. And New York City was a huge part of that dream. It's where I was able to find myself, find my voice as a writer, and then also develop my mission, which is to speak out and speak up alongside many um, girls that grew up like myself. In 2009, you meet a man and you fall in love with this man, but there's something you have to tell him something pretty big you had to tell him that he doesn't know, which is that you used to be yourself a man. After the break, we'll find out how you told him that news and how he took it. <laughs> Piers Morgan Tonight, sponsored by The Monuments Man, in theaters Friday. Men. If Germany falls, they're to destroy everything. Everything. In three days, I have to put a team together and find what's missing. The hunt. He really wanted it all. Begins. We better get it back. It's your responsibility now. The Monuments Men. Rated PG-13. It's all about you. At the heart of our world is you. It's why our commitment to be the best will always be all about you. Excellence in flight. Korean Air. You're saying I can get AT&T's network with a data plan and unlimited talk and text for as low as $45 a month? $45 a month. Wow. No annual contract? No annual contract. No long-term agreement? No long-term agreement. Really? Really. Okay, so what's the catch? There is no catch. Okay. I'm obviously getting nowhere with you. I'm gonna need to speak with a supervisor. I am the supervisor. Oh. Finally, someone I can talk to. It's not complicated. New smartphone plan starting at $45 a month with no annual contract. Only from AT&T. I take Prilosec OTC each morning for my frequent heartburn. Because you can't beat zero heartburn. Prilosec OTC is the number one doctor recommended frequent heartburn medicine for eight straight years. One pill each morning, 24 hours, zero heartburn. Hat maker Vincent Brimble prospered in the town of Haddington. Never flashy, he only made the classic bowler. Then suddenly the day's trend became preposterously tall. His Raymond James financial advisor reminded him that focusing on the long term is always fashionable. The fad was indeed a passing one. His patience paid off, allowing him to one day hang up his hat with confidence. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James advisor can do for you. What's yours? Hangzhou, China. something about my cat. Time. Oh. Sign up at eHarmony.com. We'll find the perfect guy for you. Time. Stop waiting. Start communicating for free today. Departure. Arrival. Check in. Connect. Explore. Escape. Savor. New friends. Old friends. Best friends. Book our bed and breakfast deal and be a weekender at Hilton Garden Inn. Back now, Janet Mott, the author of the revealing new memoir, Redefining Realness. So come on, man, you, you, you meet this guy. What are your thoughts? This is a big moment for you. 
For me, I was just in love with another person, and I think that he was also falling in love with me. Um, I had many, much history. I was I've been dating since I was 16 years old, and I've exclusively dated men, and I've told many men throughout my journey, and a lot of that is covered within Redefining Realness. And, and, I think, and, and just to rewind mm -hmm. there, when you had told these men the news, did some of them run a mile? Did others surprise you by being very supportive? I mean, how did men react? They were all very mixed. I think disclosure is frightening for anyone that's telling anyone about their past. And for me, I think that the through line there is that we're all looking for someone to love us for fully who we are, not despite of ourselves, but because of ourselves. And for me, I was incredibly lucky that I found someone that wanted to just love me. And also, he's lucky to also be with me. And that's something that must be also stated. See, of course. <laughs> Listen, he's the lucky one here. Let's be under no illusion. But there you are. This guy's called Aaron. He's a photographer, designer. In fact, he designed the cover of of your book here, beautiful cover. It's a very talented guy, obviously. And you know you've got strong feelings for him, and he has for you, and you've got to tell him this, this news. It must be a big moment because you really care for him. Mm -hmm. It was major. How did you react? It was, it, was, it, was a, a, it was a pivotal moment. For, for me, I was the emotional one. Um, Aaron was, he's a very steady, stable, um, even-tempered, loving man. Mm. And so he asked to give me a hug. And that's something that is talked about in the book. I don't want to give away too much, but we are still together and I'm very happy with our dog, Cleo. Would you like to, to get married? Yeah, I would. You know, one day, yes. <laughs> See, that, that suggests to me that maybe there's something going on I don't know about. No, nothing at all. It's just... It hasn't it's, popped the question yet? Not yet, no. But I would say yes. Obviously, when you, when you did all this, and then you wrote the Marie Claire piece, and now you've got the book and stuff, not many people have come out and been quite so brave and frank and honest about being transgender. Uh, you can see now people like Laverne Cox and others you know, appearing now in a more mainstream way and I guess helping the American people and other countries uh, come to terms with this as being a perfectly normal thing. For you, it's been a real struggle that you talk about very honestly in the book. To those watching here who might be like a young Charles mm -hmm. and still feel they can't go through with this, but feel desperately they want to be a woman, what's the best advice you would give them? I think the hardest battle that any of us can fight, as E.E. E. Cummings says, is a battle of being ourselves in a world that tells us that we are wrong, that we should be silent, and that we shouldn't be ourselves. And I think that there's nothing that I can tell a young person besides tap into yourself, know your truth, and surround yourself with people who affirm you and love you for exactly who you are. And sometimes the people that you need to shut out are often the ones that love you because oftentimes their expectations of you can be a lot of pressure and burden. You're seeing issues like uh, gay marriage in particular moving very fast in America, faster than many people imagined was possible. What does that tell you about modern America and its ability perhaps to, to become much more accepting and tolerant than it may have been even 20 years ago? I think that that movement has been going on for a very long time. I think that it's a, it's, um, a product of much hard work and movement and organizing. It's been going on since the 1960s. Um, and trans people were also very much a part of that movement. I think of Sylvia Rivera, Marsha P. Johnson, um, Miss Major Griffin Gracie. These trans women were also on the streets. They are fighting for their lives that night. And so for me, I think that America is about self-determination and um, exceptionalism and exerting who your identity is in a world that hopefully becomes more and more safe to express yourself and be very open about who you are. Well, I can't think of anyone better to be out there promoting uh, all this than you, Janet Mott. It's been a delight to meet you. The book is called Redefining Realness, My Path to Woman and Identity, Love, and so much more. And if I'm Aaron, I would be getting down the jewelers. That's a little <laughs> word of advice, mate. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good to see you. What a remarkable lady. There's a massive storm barreling right now across the country tonight that could affect 120 million people. So what's causing all this extreme weather? Well, we've got a hot debate on that right next. As a business owner, I'm constantly putting out fires. So I deserve a small business credit card with amazing rewards. With the Spark Cash Card from Capital One, I get 2% cash back on every purchase every day. I break my back around here. Finally, someone's recognizing me with unlimited rewards. Meetings start at 11, Cindy. Get the Spark Business Card from Capital One. Choose 2% cash back or double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? I need your time, Chief Larry. 
It's not about winning. It's not about challenging human limits. It's cool. Oh, you can scrap it? It's not about becoming the best in the world. I snowboard because I'm crazy about it.